I am Lakshmi Prasanna, Assistant Professor, Department of ECE, Institute of Aeronautical Engineering. In this session, we will discuss how to interface DAC to 8086 microprocessor. So here DAC stands for Digital to Analog Converter. So generally there are different devices that are used to convert digital to analog signals. So in this session, we will study about two digital to analog converter ICs and how they are going to convert digital signals to analog signals. And we will also see how to write an assembly language programs in order to convert digital data to analog. So that is why here analog signals that we are going to generate means the square wave, triangular wave, sawtooth wave now so in order to connect any devices either it is adc or dac or keyboard or stepper motor we have to use one ic in between that uh, uh, peripheral devices and uh, micro processor that ic which we have to use as a medium means 8255 ic so here 8255 stands for PPI that is programmable peripheral interface. So that IC is used for interfacing the peripheral devices and its IC is having the feature programmability. Okay. So this PPI8255, it is a general purpose programmable IO device which is designed to interface CPU that is microprocessor with the outside world. So outside world means in order to interface um, I.O. devices to the microprocessor, the I.O. devices may be here either uh, ADC or DAC or keyboard. So any device can be interfaced to 8086 by using this uh, 8255 PPI only. And so since here in this session, we are going to discuss about uh, DAC. First, we should know what is meant by DAC. So here DAC stands for digital to analog conversion. So it is this, it is an IC which is used to convert digital output signal, digital input signal into an analog output signal. So here digital to analog conversion. Digital data will be the input and output will be analog signal. So the digital signal is represented with the help of a binary code. That means whatever we are giving input, digital input, that should be represented in the form of binary. And so which is a combination of 0 and 1. So in order to represent that in the form of binary, we have to represent by using the bits zeros and 1s only. And so we also have uh, another IC which is called uh, ADC. Okay, so here ADC stands for analog to digital converter. So it is also an IC which is going to convert analog signal into digital signal. That means for this IC analog signal will be the input signal and it is going to convert that signal into digital. So output signal will be the digital signal. Okay, so in this session we will discuss in detail about this DAC that is digital to analog converter. Now, so here there are uh, different types of uh, DACs available. So among different types of DACs, digital to analog converter ICs, we will see here about uh, DAC0800. So this is an IC which is going to convert digital to analog and it is a 8-bit IC. Now, so this DAC0800, it is a monolithic 8-bit DAG which is manufactured by National Semiconductor. So this is the industry which has been manufactured this 8-bit DAC 
that is DAC 0800. And so especially for this DAC 0800, it has the settling time of uh, uh, 100 milliseconds. Okay. So here, so what is meant by settling time means uh, the time taken for the response to reach to the steady state. Okay. So here, time taken by the response to reach to the steady state. Okay. So here, for this DAC 0800, the settling time is 100 milliseconds and the power supply that it can operate is around 4.5 volts to plus 18 volts. So with this power supply only within the range of these values, power supply, this DAC 0800 can be operated. So here the positive power supply that we can produce is plus 5 volts that is minimum voltage up to plus 12 volts. Okay. So within this range the positive supply can be produced for this IC. And so the V minus pin. So here V minus pin means it represents the supply voltage only but negative supply voltage. So here this negative supply minimum we can produce to this IC that is DAC 0800. It is minus 12 volts. So maximum is positive voltage plus 12 volts and minimum negative voltage is minus 12 volts. Now, so those are the some of the features of this uh, DAC 0800 that is digital to analog converter IC. So this IC is an 8 bit IC. So why here we are calling it as 8-bit means? So here totally this is a DAC, digital to analog converter. That means digital signal will be the input. Now we have to see through which pins that digital signal will be taking as an input. Okay, so which pins are the input pins that take the digital data? And after performing the conversion and through which pins the analog output will be produced. So in order to know that, we have to see the pin diagram of this 0800 digital to analog converter IC. So if you see here, this is a 16 pin IC. So here the number of pins that are available are 16 pins. So all these uh, 16 pins here, are arranged in the dual inline package. Okay. So all these 16 pins are arranged in the dual inline package. So here all the 16 pins are, so this is from pin number 1 to 8 and here we can see this is from 9 to 16. So totally 16 pins are there. So all these pins are arranged in the dual inline package. So dual inline package means half of the pins will be at one end of the IC. The remaining half of the pins will be at the other end of the IC. So you can see from 1 to 8 here and we can see from 9 to 16 at another end. So here digital to analog conversion. Okay, digital input will be there. So here digital input will be from B1 to B8. Okay. So the bit, whatever we are giving here B8, it should be the LSB bit. And across B1, we have to provide the MSB bit. Okay. So here are the pins from B1 to B8. They are the digital input pins. So digital data means it has to represent with the help of zeros and ones. So in that bit stream, LSB bit will be uh, connected to the B8 pin and MSB bit should be at the B1 pin. So B1, B2, B3, B4, okay, B5, B6, B7, B8, all these are the eight digital input pins for this 0800 IC. So that is why it is called 8-bit digital to analog converter. So 8 bits, digital bits.
8 bits input. That is why it is called 8 bit digital to analog converter. So after taking all these digital inputs, it will be converted into analog output. Now we have to, in order to collect the analog output, it is possible with these uh, two signals, one is uh, uh, I out, another one is uh, I out, ba. Okay. So here through these uh, two I out signals, analog data, output data will be collected. So in between these, the digital data to convert into analog, we have different uh, techniques. One is weighted resistor, another one is R to R ladder network. So like this different uh, techniques are there, but uh, uh, among all these different techniques, R to R ladder network will be preferred to convert this uh, digital into analog. Okay. So if you take weighted resistors, the number of resistors will be more. So if you take R to R ladder network, only two resistors, arrangement of that resistors uh, in parallel like ladder, you can use to convert digital to analog conversion. Okay. So in between uh, these, we have to produce uh, this uh, V plus and V minus that is positive and negative supply voltages. And these are the two positive and negative reference voltages. And for this IC, this is a compensation pin. And here this is a VLC, which uh, represents the threshold control. So here all these are the 16 pins. So if you observe here, the first pin, it is VLC, which is called threshold control. And pin number two here, this is I out. Okay, current output, okay. that means here analog output will be collected. The analog output will be generally in the form of uh, current only. But it is not possible to measure for us if it is in form of current. Later in the circuit, we have to see that this current output should be converted into voltage and that should be represented as an output. And pin number three is here V minus which says it is a negative voltage and uh, here this is uh, I out. This I out represents uh, another uh, current output. Okay. So here I out inverse means this is the second pin. There will be bar indicated on the top. And so here if you observe from pin number 5 to pin number 11. So all these pins are related to digital input pins. Okay. So especially at B1, you have to give MSB and at B8, LSB should be provided. And pin number 13, if you see, this is a V plus. Okay. So V plus says it is a positive supply voltage. And another here, 14th pin, it is a V reference plus. Okay. REF stands for reference voltage and plus is the positive voltage reference. And here 15th pin, it is a V reference minus, which indicates negative voltage reference. And here 16th pin is the compensation pin. So all these are the 16 pins that are available in this DAC 0800. Now if you see here the circuit diagram and the interfacing diagram of this uh, DAC 28086. So here D0 to D7, digital to analog converter. That means here digital data will be given as input. From which device generally we will get the digital data means from 8086. Generally we know microprocessor, it will be taking the digital input data and after doing some operations, it is also going to produce the output data which is in the form of digital only. So that is why this D0 to D7 will be coming from the uh, 8086 microprocessor data bus, which is in the form of digital data and it will be taken as input by this 8255. So as we know here, this is DAC 0800, I mean 0808. That means this is digital to analog converter and it is interfaced to 8086. As we have seen in the starting of the session, so in order to connect these uh, peripheral devices to 8086, compulsory we should use this uh, 8255 IC as a medium. Okay. 
So that is why it is called PPI, Programmable Peripheral Interface. So this IC will interface these peripheral devices to 8086 microprocessor. And this 8255, it is having a three ports, port A, port B and port C. Okay. So using any of that uh, port, each port is of 8 bit in size. Using any of that port, we can connect this peripheral devices. So in this case, for example, uh, port A is used. Okay. So this uh, digital data through this bus and it comes to this port and it will be sent to this digital to analog conversion. So as we have seen in the pin diagram for digital to analog conversion, we have B1 to B8 pins. Through that uh, pins, the digital data will be taken by this digital to analog converter and it is going to convert into analog signal and through this uh, fourth pin, we are going to get the I out. Okay. So here I out means at the fourth pin, we will get the analog signal only, but it will be in terms of current. So it is not possible to measure if the output is in terms of current waveform. So it has to be converted into V0, V means voltage. So it need to be converted into voltage. So that is why here one uh, op amp 741 IC that is op amp operational amplifier is used in order to convert this current output into voltage output. And here one feedback resistor is used. The feedback resistor is used in order to increase the gain. So this is how we have to interface this uh, DAC, 8-bit DAC to 8086 microprocessor. And so that is one IC which is used to convert digital to analog signal. And there is one more IC that is AD7523. It, it operation is also converting digital to analog only. So we can use any of these two. So it is also an 8-bit IC and it is called as multiplying DAC. Okay. So AD7523, it is a 16 pin. So though it is having 16 pins, it is called 8-bit only. Why? Because the number of digital inputs it can take is only 8 bits. So multiplying digital to analog converter, it contains R to R ladder network for converting digital to analog signal. So as I have said, there are different techniques uh, that can be used to perform digital signal to analog signal. So out of that, out of those many techniques, this AD7523 IC uses this R2R ladder network technique to convert digital to analog conversion. So if you see here, this is a AD7523. It is an IC having the 16 pins here. So it is a 16 pin IC. All these pins are arranged in the dual in line package. So half of the pins that is from pin number 1 to 8 are present at one side and pin number 9 to 16 are present at the other side. So here, uh, since it is a 8 bit, 8 digital inputs can be given. So here 8 digital inputs can be given through the pins B1, B2, B3, B4, B5 and B6, B7 and B8, digital to analog conversion. So digital inputs, 8 inputs you can give through these 8 bits, pins. Okay. So here this ML, B1 will be having the MSB bit and B8 carries this LSB bit. So in between there will be the data. And so these are the digital inputs. And after converting in order to collect the analog output. So here are the two analog output signals. Out 1 and out 2. Okay. And so this is the ground pin and this is RFB which says it is a feedback resistor. And this is the reference voltage. And it is V plus positive uh, power supply. And these two NC represents no connection. So this is the pin diagram of AD7523. So if you see here all the pins, so 14th pin if you see, okay, so it represents a V plus, so it is nothing but VCC, positive power supply. 
so the positive power supply it should require should be within the range plus 5 volts to plus 15 volts and third pin if we see here okay so this is the ground pin so ground connection for this uh, ad7523 ic and next one is 15th pin so if you see here this is the 15th pin which indicates uh, vref that means it is a reference voltage okay and it should be varying in the range minus 10 volts to plus 10 volts and pin numbers 4 to 11 as we have seen uh, pin number 4 to pin number 11 these are all the bits bit from b1 to b8 will be carrying all the binary input and here one and two pins these two are the out one and out two pins which will be used for collecting the analog output and here 12 and 13 so pin number 12 and 13 are here so they represents nc which is called no connection they will be idle and here 16th pin is there so this is the 16th pin which is uh, rfb so here fb stands for feedback and r is a resistor so in this uh, internal circuit of this uh, uh, IC, we will have that uh, RFB resistor which is connected as a feedback. So, here this is uh, AD7523 IC. We are interfacing to 8086 microprocessor. So, this is a digital to analog converter IC. Okay. So, here is 8255 which is a PPI, Programmable Peripheral Interface, which is used for connecting this peripheral devices to 8086 microprocessor okay so from 8086 microprocessor through this uh, d0 to 2 d7 data lines the digital input will be getting to this 8255 and from this 8255 by using any of the any of one port among the three ports so here port a is used that digital data will be forwarded to this digital to analog converter IC. Okay. So, these are the reference voltages. After converting digital to analog data, you can collect the analog output through these uh, out1 and out2 signals. But here, these uh, two out1 and out2 signals, uh, the output what we are getting will be in terms of uh, current. So, that should be converted into voltage and we have to take here. So, we can observe here there is a Zener diode which is connected in parallel between this out1 and out2 pins and we can see here there is a RFB that is feedback resistor connected from output to input. So, if it is necessary we can use RFB, if it is not necessary we can leave it open circuit and here there is a, a op amp 741 that is connected at the output. So now we will see what is the reason of using this Zener diode or BAMP and feedback resistor in the circuit. Now, so the supply voltage will be extending from plus 5 volts to plus 15 volts, whereas the reference voltage will be in the range minus 10 volts to plus 10 volts. And so the maximum analog output voltage will be plus 10 volts when all the digital inputs are at logic high state. So, in the circuit if you observe previously what we have seen there is a Zener diode connected between out1 and out2 pins. Okay. So, what is the purpose of connecting that Zener diode means in order to save this DAC from negative transients. And so, along with that uh, um, Zener diode there is also op amp present at the output. So, that is IC741 which is called operational amplifier. So, what is the purpose of that op amp in the circuit means? It is used as current to voltage converter. So, as we know across out1 and out2 pins we are getting the uh, current output. So, using this uh, operational amplifier it will be current output will be converted into voltage output. So, to convert the current output that is produced by this IC to the voltage output. So, mainly op amp is used. 
and it also offers additional drive capability to the DAC output. Driving capacity will be increased. And we have also observed one feedback resistor is there after op-amp. So if it is necessary, we can use it. Otherwise, we can uh, neglect it. So if you use that resistor as a feedback resistor, we can control the gain. If feedback resistor is uh, not used, no gain can be controlled. Now, so we will see how to write the assembly language programs to generate different uh, analog signals like uh, square wave, uh, sawtooth wave and triangular wave. So before writing the programs, first we should know about this uh, CWR. So here the CWR stands for control word register. Why? Because if you are connecting this uh, ADC, DAC or stepper motor or keyboard, we have to connect all the devices to 8086 microprocessor by using 8255 PPI. So in, inside 8255 PPI, there are some registers available. One of the register in 8255 IC is CWR. So here the CWR is a 8-bit register, which is from D0 to D7. And so it is an 8-bit register. So based on the bits of this uh, CWR, the 8255 is programmable. So if you see here, because uh, we have to write the CWR value in the program. So if you consider here this uh, D7 bit, so D7 bit, if you are keeping it uh, 1, this 8255 will be operating in the I.O. mode. If you are keeping it D7 as 0, it will be operating in the BSR mode. Next bit is D6 and D5. So these two bits together says the mode selection. So which port mode selection means port A mode selection. So if these two bits are 0, 0, port A mode 0 is selected. If these two bits are 0, 1, port A mode 1 is selected. If it is 1, 0, port A mode 2 will be selected. And this D4 bit says which port we are selecting. And that port, whether it is used as the input port or output port. So if D4 bit is uh, 1, so this D4 is related to port A. If that bit is 1, port A will be acting as the input port. If that bit is 0, port A will be acting as the output port. And so here, these two are related. So this is port A and these two bits, port A mode. And Coming to here, this uh, D3 bit, D3 bit says the information related to port C as well as D0 bit also says the information related to port C. Okay. So here in 8255, port C is divided into two groups. So port C upper and port C lower. So totally port C is 8 bit port. It is divided into two 4 bit port. So port C upper and port C lower. So when this D3 bit is uh, set as 1, port C upper will be acting as the input port. When it is 0, port C upper will be acting as the output port. Similarly, coming to the D0 bit, when this uh, D0 bit is 1, port C will be acting as the input port. And when it is 0, port C will be acting as the output port. Okay. So now, coming to this uh, D2 bit, so this D2 bit also says the mode selection only, but this D2 bit mode selection is related to port B. Okay. So this D2 bit, if it is 0, port B will be operating in mode 0. If this D2 bit is 1, port B will be operating in mode 1. And so this D1 bit is used to select port B as input port or output port. So here, if this D1 bit is uh, 1, it will be acting as a input port. If this D1 bit is 0, port B will be acting as a output port. So keeping in mind the format of this uh, CWR, we have to write the assembly level language programs uh, in order to generate the analog signals. So.
Here we will see how to generate different analog signals like square wave, triangular wave and sawtooth wave. So this is the program to generate square wave. So now first we have to do some uh, analysis how to write the program. So first if you see here, this is a square wave. Okay. So this is the square wave. So for this square wave, this is a uniform square wave, okay. So this is called 0 volts and this positive peak, it is called 5 volts. And again, it has to carry the same 5 volts to some delay and after that it has to reach to 0 volts suddenly. And when it comes to 0 volts suddenly, the same 0 volts has to be maintained with some duration, okay. After that, it has to increase to 5 volts. That means, here whatever the time period, okay, so time period, generally we call as here delay, we are maintaining. The same time period should be maintained here. The same time period should be maintained here in order to generate a uniform square wave. Okay, so generally here, 0, 0. You have to represent that in the form of binary in the program. But generally while writing the assembly level language program, whatever the values you have to indicate, it should be represented with the help of hexadecimal only. So here 0 volts means generally it is the minimum voltage according to our consideration and 5 volts means it is the maximum voltage. So generally to represent 0 volts by using 8-bit data, you can write it as a 0, 0. If you want to represent 5 volts using 8 bit, you can write that is 0. I mean, 5 volts is the maximum voltage. So, you can represent that with 0, 5. So, but according to the hexadecimal using 8 bit, you can indicate this 0 volts with the 0, 0 and you can indicate this 5 volts with the maximum 8 bit. So, suppose if you take this 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0 and what is the next 8 bit 0, 0, 0, 1, sorry, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1. So, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0. So, in order to represent 0 volts, 1 volts, 2 volts, okay. But here, this is for 0, 0. But here if you see 5 volts, so maximum value that you can represent with the help of uh, 8 bit is, one is here F, another one is, this is F, okay. So that is why here 5 volts will be represented with F, F. So in the program, here we are going to take 0, 1, 4, 7 as a delay. The same delay should be maintained at the 5 volts also, that is 0, 1, 4, 7 only, okay. So in order to get the continuous square wave form like this, we have to repeat the loop by executing same number of instructions again. Okay. So for this, we have to write the program such that it should generate the square wave. So here, in order to represent uh, 0 volts, we will use 0, 0 and uh, uh, in order to represent 5 volts maximum value, we will use FF in the program. Now, so here, this is the program which is used to generate the square wave. So first one is here move AL comma ATH. That means here the AT value will be moved into AL register. Okay. So what is here the value AT means? It is the value of control word register. So just we have seen uh, the control word register. So here AT means in that register we have seen it is an 8 bit register 1000. 0, 0, 0, 0. So, if you place this 8 bit uh, uh, data which represents a value 80, it will operate accordingly. Like it will operate first uh, bit is 1, it will operate in the IO mode. Next to 2 bits are uh, zeros, it will be op port A will be used and it will be operating in the uh, mode 0. And the next uh, 0, it is related to port A. If it is 0, port A will be used as the output port. So, all these considerations keeping in mind we are loading this AT value into AL 
register. So this AT value is the value of CWR. And the next move DX comma 0 FF E6 means. So here this 0 FF E6. So generally as we know here, this is a 0 FF E0 and a 0 FF E2. Okay. So 0 FF E4 and 0 FF E6. So you can consider all these as a port address. Okay. So especially here if you see 0, 2, 4, 6, all these are the even port addresses. So if you want to use odd port addresses also, we can use as 0 FF E1, 0 FF E3, 0 FF E5 and 0 FF E7. So now here this is the E0, it is for uh, port address of port A and this is for uh, port B and this is for uh, port C and 0 FF E6 is the port address of CWR. Okay. So since here we are initializing the value into CWR, we are, we are moving this uh, 0 FF E6 port address into DX register and out dx comma al so here what is the value of uh, al here the value of al is 80 and the value of dx is 0 ff e6 so if this instruction is executed the function of out instruction is it is used to move the content present in accumulator to the output port address so this value 80 will be moved into the cwr port address 0 ff E6. So the first three lines in this program represents, I mean, re are related to CWR. So using these three lines, CWR can be initialized. The value will be moved into the output port address of CWR. And next is you have to initialize uh, any port in 8255. So that is why move dx comma 0 ff e0. So that means uh, 0 ff. E0 will be moved into DX register. Okay. So this is the port address of port A. And next here as we know this is in order to draw the square wave. Okay. So it consists of uh, 0 volts and 5 volts as we have discussed. It is represented with 0, 0 and it is represented with FF. So here move AL comma 0, 0. So the minimum value 0, 0 will be moved into AL and out dx comma al so the same 0 0 will be moved into the output uh, port address 0 ff e0 so 0 0 value will be moved into the output port so the same 0 0 after moving into the output port the same 0 0 value should be continued to some delay so that is what we have to initialize the delay now as you know the number of counts delay loops and all will be represented with the help of cx register so move CX comma 0147. 0147 is a delay which will be moved into CX register. So that is what we have maintained here 0147 delay. Okay, for 00, 0 value. So here this is uh, to initialize uh, port A with 0 volts, minimum voltage. And next uh, loop self. Okay, so this is called generally self loop. Why? Because the control has to be in the same line without executing the next instructions until this delay is completed. So in order to do that, be, uh, below this uh, uh, delay, we are going to write the self loop. Next, move AL comma FF. Why? Because here next uh, maximum value is FF after reaching this delay. Up to now the self uh, loop will be executed. Once after if it reaches the delay, the next line move AL comma FF will be executed. So the maximum value FF will be moved into AL register. Okay. And out DX comma AL means here the value which is present in FF will be moved into 0 FF E0. Okay. So the maximum value will be moved here. And the maximum value FF has to be continued with the same delay what it has executed for 0 volts. So that is 0, 1, 4, 7. So the counter value will be loaded with 0, 1, 4, 7 delay. Okay. So until the 
delay is completed in order to uh, make the control to be in the same line we are writing the self loop below that so up to complete a uh, completion of this delay it will be in the same line once after the delay is completed the next line jump back will be executed so jump back means the control will again move to the label back so if it goes to the label back again the next cycle from 0 0 it will be starting okay continues the same delay after completion of this delay it will move to the maximum voltage ff and again it continues with the same delay like the the uniform continuous square wave will be generated okay so this is how we have to write the program to generate the square wave and next one is program to generate the triangular wave so same here also we have to consider cwr and uh, 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 the port addresses which we have to use okay so triangular wave means generally the triangular wave will be like this continuous triangular wave will be like this okay so the minimum voltage will be 0 volts and here also the maximum voltage we will consider as 0 volts as we know in hexadecimal in the program 0 volts as we have discussed previously it should be with the 0 0 value represented in the program this 5 volts we have to represent with ff once after if it reaches the maximum voltage and again that voltage should be decremented to 0 volts that is 0 0 like this the loop will be repeated now so in order to get the positive uh, increase we have to compare the value 0 0 with 5 volts once after reaching this 5 volts in order to reduce the voltage we have to compare this 5 volts with 0 0 volts so in this case we have to use the instruction called increment increment the value of al okay so in this case uh, in order to decrease you have to use the instruction called decrement al once if it reaches this uh, maximum peak so this is for this we have to write the assembly level language program now so this is the program to generate the triangular wave so here move al comma ath means the value at is moved into al register so as we know here the value at means it is a value of cwr okay and move dx comma 0 ff e6 means the value 0 ff e6 will be moved into dx register okay so it represents the port address of cwr okay so this is the port address of CWR and out DX comma AL means the content which is present in AL will be moved to the output port address DX. So here the value 80 which is present in AL will be moved to the output port address 0 FF E6. Okay. And so as we know the waveform it will be starting from the minimum voltage 0 so we have to load this 0 value into AL register. So the value 0, 0 will be moved into AL register. And move DX comma 0 FF E2. So here the port address is related to port B. Okay. So 0 FF E2 will be moved into DX register. And out DX comma AL. So here AL value is 0, 0. So the value 0, 0 will be moved into the port address 0 FF E2. Okay. And so here um, after 0 volts you have to keep incrementing the value of AL because from 0, 0 it has to reach the maximum value 5 volts. So that is why we have to keep on incrementing the value of AL until it reaches the 5 volts that is FF. So you have to use the instruction called increment AL. So the value of AL will be incremented by 1. So for example, uh, it may become 0, 1 when it is incremented by 1 because previously it is 0, 0. And uh, after incrementing the value of AL, whether it has reached the maximum point or not, we have to compare with the maximum voltage that is FF. 
So that is why here CMP it represents comparison instruction. Compare AL comma FFH. So here value of AL is 0, 1. It will be compared with FF. So during its comparison, the comparison means negative operation. Okay. So during its comparison, so 0, 1 minus FF means it leads to negative result. So negative result means here carry bit is set. Okay. So when this condition occurs, the next instruction JBL1. So JB stands for jump if below. That means if carry bit is set. Okay. So jump to label L1. So what happens again the control will be moving to the label L1 because carry bit is set during comparison. So if it goes to the label L1, the same uh, lines will be executed like out AX, DX, comma AL. But now AL value is incremented. It is 0, 1. That value will be moved into 0, FF, E2. Okay. And uh, uh, increment AL. So in the next case, AL will be incremented by 1. And compare AL, comma 0, FF. Now AL is 0, 2. It will be compared with FF. So in this case also, it is result is negative. So carry bit is set. So again jump if below condition like that the same loop will be repeated until it reaches the FF value. So when after if keep on incrementing the value of AL at one point the AL value will be equal to FF. So at that condition when the value is uh, equal to FF during the comparison the same AL that is uh, FF value here FF value, it will be compared with FF. So, in this case, the result will be 0. So, when carry bit is set only, it goes to the label L1. Otherwise, the next instruction L2, that is out DX comma AL will be executed. In that case, into DX support address, this FF value will be moved. And so, after reaching the maximum 5 volts, from 5 volts, it has to decrease to 0 volts. So that is why here you have to use a decrement AL instruction. And that AL instruction after decrementing by 1, it will be comparing with 0, 0. So after comparison, there will be carry or in some conditions, there will not be any carry. So here JNB means jump if not below or equal. Okay. So that means if CY is equal to 0, it goes to the label L2 and the same uh, instructions will be repeated in order to get the uh, negative slope. Okay. So jump L3 means the same lines will be executed in order to produce the next cycle. So in order to get the positive peak that is uh, from 0 volts to 5 volts, we are comparing the uh, value which is present in AL with FF. But in order to decrease, uh, I mean, get the negative slope from FF to 0, 0, we are comparing the value present in AL with 0, 0. Okay. So this is how we have to write the program in order to get the triangular wave. The same program here, if you want to write uh, to produce the uh, sawtooth wave, uh, waveform. So first we have to know what is meant by sawtooth waveform. So here sawtooth waveform will be like this. Okay, so here this is uh, 0 volts and here it is 5 volts and uh, suddenly it will be reducing to 0 volts. Okay, so here 0 volts will be represented with 0, 0 and uh, 5 volts will be with FF. And from FF, again it has to reach to 0, 0 suddenly, not like a uh, triangular wave. Okay, so here in order to increase from 0, 0 to 5 volts, we can consider the same program what we have written for the triangular wave. Okay. But in order to reduce from uh, FF to 0 volts, no need to decrement the value of AL and no need to decrement the, I mean, compare the value of AL with FF. Suddenly it will be reducing. Okay. So half of the program will be same as the triangular program. But the remaining program which is present in the triangular program can be eliminated in order to write the program for sawtooth wave. So this is the program to generate a sawtooth wave. 
So as we know here, the value 80 will be loaded into AL. Here 80 is the value of CWR. And mu dx comma 0 ff e6. So 0 ff e6 is the uh, port address which will be moved into dx. Port address of CWR it is. And out dx comma al means the value 80 will be moved into 0 ff e6. That is output port address. Okay. So these three lines for uh, uh, all the waveform generation programs are same. The first three, we have to initialize the control word register. Next, move AL, 0, 0. So, the value 0, 0 will be moved into AL because in order to get the sawtooth, first one is 0, 0 and next it has to reach to FF by comparing this 0, 0 value with FF and simply incrementing the value of AL. So, if you have, you have to increment the value of AL if the carry bit is set. So, out dx comma 0 ff e2 means this 0 ff e2 that is the port address of port b it will be moved into dx register and out uh, dx comma al means this 0 0 value will be moved into the port address which is initialized with dx register. Okay. So, these three are related to uh, port a I mean port b initialization. Next, we have to increment the value of AL. Why? Because AL is 0, 0. In order to get this point, you have to increment the value of AL. So, here AL value will become 0, 1 and compare AL comma FF. So, here this 0, 1 will be compared with FF. Comparison means negative operation. So, it leads to some result which is negative. So, if there is negative result, carry bit is set. Okay. After that, the instruction JBL1 will be executed. So, here JB means jump if below. That means, if carry bit is set, jump to L1. Okay. So, here if the control goes to the label L1, again the same instructions will be executed. Again, increment AL will takes place. If increment AL takes place, in order to reach this point, we have to compare again that to FF. Okay. Again, if carry occurs, the same loop will be repeated. So, if we keep on incrementing the value of AL like this, at one point, the value of AL will become FF. Okay. So, once it reaches FF, when this comparison instruction is executed, that is uh, FF is there in AL and it will be compared with FF. So, here the result is 0. So, in this case, the carry is not set. Okay. So, if carry is set only, it goes to the label L1. Otherwise, it executes the next instruction out dx comma AL. Okay. So, here FF will be moved into 0 FF E2 port address. And so, if this instruction is executed and next JMP L2 jump to the label L2. So, if the control goes to the label L2, the same 0, 0 again. Okay. So, again from 0, 0, the next cycle of the sawtooth sort, waveform will be generated. Okay. So, this is how we have to write the assembly language program to generate sawtooth waveform. So, this is how we have to interface DAC, that is digital to analog converter, to 8086 microprocessor. Thank you. Like, share and subscribe. Hit the bell icon for more updates.